and we speak about communism. Communism here in Albania. How did it start? Since during King Zog's time, we have a small group of students supporting the communist ideas. They are not very good organized. They are only trying to protest against the king. So, 1939, the king left the country. Nobody was protecting our country. So all the communist groups come together in a small village near Tirana called Preza. They decided to found the Communist Party. They are also choosing a leader. Their leader is Enver Hoxha. Later, Hoxha is going to become the dictator of Albania. They decided to have an army, a guerrilla army. A lot of Albanians are joined to that army, even young and educated ones. Not to support the communist idea, but as Albanian patriots. Like, not everybody on that army was a communist. A lot of them were patriots fighting to protect our country. Was the only army to fight for our country. So the Communist Party fought during the Second World War against the Italian forces and for one year even against the Nazi forces. On their way to retreat, the German forces would stop here in Tirana, in Albania, and the Communist Party normally fought even against them. So Second World War is finished. Three different groups are trying to come to Tirana, some way are trying to come to power. Communist group, very good organized. They have a leader, they have an army, they have fought during the Second World War, everybody knows about them. We have King Zog's forces, not very good organized. The king is in exile, he's trying to come back, but it's very hard for him. And even some other forces who were formed during the Second World War. Normally the Communist Party managed to come first here in Tirana, to control the city of Tirana through the army, and normally the ones in Tirana they are in power. After expanding their power to the whole other cities of Albania, the king is still the rightful king of the Albanian people. He's in France, he's trying to come back. But it's very hard for him, as I told you. So what they did, the Communist Party decided to have a one-party system. They had elections in here. In those elections, the Communist Party won by 99.9% .9 of the votes. It was the only party you could vote for. So once the elections were finished, the Communist Party came in power by elections through a special law that never allowed. They considered the king as a traitor and they never allowed the king to come back again here in Albania. He died in exile in France 1968. Okay, once they are really controlling the country, they decided to close our borders. So the borders of this small country called Albania was surrounded by walls and protected by soldiers. Nobody could come in the inside, nobody could leave the country. So a lot of people were suffering during the, uh, when they decided to build that wall especially in the border cities, because a lot of families who are living in the border between Kosovo and Albania were divided. Macedonia and Albania, or Greece and Albania, a lot of families were divided. But once that wall was built, it was protected by our soldiers. Nobody could come in, but nobody could leave the country. So the country was totally closed. They interrupted, the Communist Party decided to interrupt all our international relationship. And through propaganda, they were trying to convince the Albanian people that this is the best country of the world. Okay, our communist story is better explained with international relationship. In 50 years of communism, we only have three international partners. First partner, Tito, Yugoslavia, the leader of Yugoslavia. Tito helped Hoxha during the Second World War. Once the war is finished, they managed to become some kind of best friends. But in an international conference, Tito is going against Stalin. He's trying to open his country normally, he's trying to reorganize his economy. Our leader wants to keep on Stalin's way. It's called Stalinism. So he is accusing Tito for not being a real communist. So here we have a new best friend, Russia. During Russia time, the country was doing very good. A lot of Albanians at least were allowed to move from Albania in Russia to study over there. Even our best writer, Kadare, studied in Russia. Once finished in Saudi, he's coming back here in Albania, trying to rebuild the country. Same thing happened with Russia. Stalin is dead. The new leaders are trying to open the country, are trying to reorganize the economy. They're accusing Stalin for the communist crimes. So here we have Enver Hoxha, the leader of this small country called Albania, accusing Russia and all the other Eastern European countries for not being real communist countries. Normally we remained without friends. It was hard for us. We start looking for a friend. We managed to find a friend. Who can say a name? China. 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 Our partner was China.
Albania and China, really, it makes no logical sense. Big China, small Albania. China is far, far away from here. But still, our relationship with China was a very special relationship. Such a special relationship that in our schools they start singing songs about Mao, their leader, and Hoja, our leader. I think we have different reasons why all this, really, all this connection with China. During those years, during the 70s, we had the same enemy, Russia. China was looking for a European country to support the communist idea of China. Albania was a European country, even if all the other part of Europe had no idea that Albania existed. But still, we were a European country supporting China. And for us, China becomes a very special partner because all the money, all the international investments of China are coming here in Albania. So very good relationship. In this tour, we normally have even Chinese people who used to grow during the 70s back in China and they would transmit movies in China, Albanian movies, mostly communist propaganda, movies that were produced here in Tirana. And the Chinese government would refer to those movies as European classics. <laughs> okay, same reaction as you and my question was why European classics, sorry. Even China was a very close country. So the Albanian faces were the only European faces that you could see back then in China. So I think one of those movies is the second most watched movie on YouTube. All the Chinese people who are nostalgic about this movie had seen that movie. Still, very good and inter uh, connection, very good uh, relationship with China. But same thing happened even with China. China is facing internal problems. They stop investing money here in Albania. Our leader is accusing even China for not being a real communist country. We really remained without friends. He's directed to the Albanian people with an expression. We will eat grass and ask for help to anybody. The bad thing of that expression was that it was real. Everything was missing, starting from the end of the 70s until the 90s. In here, everything was missing, even food. A family of four persons, food was organized based on vouchers, and a family of four persons would only have two kilos of meat a month, two liters of cooking oil, one chicken a month. The other part would be bread and vegetables. So everything was missing. As I told you, through propaganda, they were trying to convince the Albanian people that this is the best country of the world. We only had one TV station here, the national one. It would broadcast four hours a day from here, from Tirana, mostly communist propaganda. But they even found documentaries about homeless people in the US. So for two hours, they would transmit the documentary. After that, you'd hear the voice of the journalist. You see, we are the best country of the world, the most organized country of the world. You see how capitalism makes people suffer. Normally, in a certain point, the Albanian people really start to believe that. So a lot of Albanians start to believe that this is the best country of the world. It almost gets on our DNA. Our whole life was organized based on the communist ideas. A lot of friends of my father are called Melts. Marx goes for Marx, Engels, Lenin and Stalin. So normally we start to believe that this is the best country in the world. If you ask to somebody right now here in Albania, what was something good about communism? First thing they always say, somebody that was important during communism was a communist party member who had a lot of favors for the communist party. First thing they always say, the country was very clean totally agree on that. This was the cleanest country of the world. But the idea is that we didn't have anything to throw away. We only have basic food, basic clothes. Plastic bottles like this for us, it didn't exist. Everything that it wasn't produced here for us, it didn't exist. The country was very safe. I agree even on that. This was the safest country of the world. You could sleep in this park, I don't know, for a week. If you want, nothing would happen to you. But the secret services were controlling everything. If you and your friend are going to the market, you are saying to your friend, these potatoes do not look so good today. For such a small thing, like not good potatoes, you may end up in prison. Because when you are going home, you would find somebody of the Secret Service is saying to you, I heard you didn't like the potatoes today. Why do you think your government is not offering you good food? So it all starts with not good potatoes, you are directly in prison. Once in prison, you are never going to get home. You'll find something to accuse you, then give you uh, two years, another two years, until once in prison, always in prison. Okay, education was for free, but normally it wasn't for everybody. You allowed only to have one member educated in your family, 
and was totally controlled by the Communist Party, so we were allowed to learn about ancient history of the world, medieval history of the world, Second World War, after that total darkness, nothing. Those small, uh, that small number of Albanians who were allowed to uh, learn outside our official borders, like in other communist countries, a small number of them, when they were coming back here in Albania, they weren't allowed to say anything about what they saw over there. Because normally this is the best country of the world. Collective punishment was a very bad thing. Not a lot of Albanians tried to leave the country, but a small number of them who left the country, they were very lucky. They would go to freedom, but their whole family would be persecuted. Mother and father ending up in prison. Even third grade cousins who never had an idea that you existed, never met you, would be considered cousins of a traitor. They would lose the opportunity to go to university or to have a good job during communism. It was total control. How did it collapse? Something very important happened in 1985. Communist leader Enver Hoxha is dead by natural causes. The next to rule our country, Ramiz Alia. Always a personal opinion, Alia is a better leader, a softer leader, a smarter leader. So he knew that he's going to lose power. A lot of movement is happening outside our official borders. So he, at start, is allowing the Albanian people to watch the foreign channels in the Albanian language. Especially in Tirana, a lot of people are listening to the voice of America in the Albanian language. He is allowing the Albanian people to emigrate to Italy and to Greece, and for the first time, he's allowing them on coming back. Once back, a lot of talking is happening in here. So for during the 90s, for the first time in 50 years, we have a protest against the Communist Party. It all starts on Student City. The students are protesting against the Communist Party. They want better books, better condition of life, better food. From Student City, they came inside the city of Tirana. As a softer leader, Aliyah is allowing that protest. It's the collapse of the Berlin Wall. In Romania, they killed the Romanian leader, the communist leader. He didn't want to end up in the same way, so he's allowing the students to come inside the city. As a smart leader, he's allowing them to have a meeting with him to present the idea of the students. And normally, he knew that he's going to lose power, but he's smart. He's like, let's have power for another four years. He is allowing them to have a two-party system. He is allowing them to have a democratic party. But only three months after the democratic party is formed, he is like, let's have elections. Normally, the Albanian people were not prepared. 1991, first two-party system elections. The Communist Party lost Tirana. Everybody knew what was happening in here. But they won all the other cities of Albania. Normally, the Albanian people were not prepared for those elections. Elections here in Albania would be every year Every four years, you'd vote, but you'd vote like yeah, you vote in during communism. You was you taking a white piece of paper, put it on a box. You just vote for the communist party. Normally, again, a lot of protest is happening in here. Democratic new elections. Democratic party came to power 1992. This country is a new democracy. So the passing from communism to democracy was through elections. A lot of protest, but through elections. Normally, as a new democracy, we are facing a lot of problems, especially with corruption and media control. But in one thing, we totally agree. We support our main parties on their project to be part of the European Union. So with us trying to be part of the European Union, they are really helping us to fight corruption, to fight media control, and to have the economical standards that the European Union does. Okay, we can make a quick stop over there, so we see some of the statues that are exposed in the behind. But we are still afraid of him. We are afraid that he can't come back. You are nice, 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 nice. For do not be disappointed. Let me present to you the castle of Tirana. Ta -da -da -da. It's only this wall in here. Everything connected with the wall or inside the wall, nothing to do with the castle. We believe that the castle was built during the Byzantine Empire. So people to travel on Via Ignatia or Street Ignatia was the ancient street to connect Rome with Constantinople would make like a quick stop inside the castle of Tirana. Some kind of gas station of the ancient times. 
So stop here in Tirana, then they will go in their way. If you want to see very big castles here in Albania, you can visit cities like Škodra, Perat, Girokastra, Kruja. But normally the castles are at the top of a hill or at the top of a mountain to have natural protection. This one is a field castle. So as a field castle it's very important because we only have three field castles here in Albania. So we decided to rebuild the wall just to remember the field castle of Tirana. Okay, the white street that we see here, it's Murat Toptani street. It's a street totally dedicated to walkers. Cars are not allowed in this street. Normally, it's named after Murat Toptani, one of the local leaders of Tirana. And it's a very special street because every time we organize something important, like we have like a local beer that's organizing a mini Oktoberfest in here. Like right now, they are organizing something like to present the Albanian products. Like the Albanian companies are presenting their products to the public. Everything is organized in here. Every time we have the European qualification, the World Cup qualification, we really, really, really love football in here. It's organized in this area in here with big screens, street food, beers and everything. Last year, for the first time in our history, the national team of Albania managed to be part of the European qualifications. For us, we played three games. We only won one game against Romania. We lost against France and Switzerland. But for us, it was like winning the Europeans. Yes. No, no, about Europe. Is, it, is there a split between young and older Albanians when no. it comes to the vision? No. Nine, do not say 99% because it looks like communists. It's 90% of the Albanians support the two main parties on their project to be part of the European Union. When we visit the parliament, we will explain even the reasons why we are. We have all this support about the European Union. Okay, next stop is George W. Bush Street. Okay, we will explain why we named the street after George W. Bush. This way. How about Trump? Trump Street. <laughs> That's the next one. <laughs> Okay, the sign over there, it says Ruga George W. Bush, it means George W. Bush Street. Why one of our main streets is named after George W. Bush? 2007, as a support for Albania to be part of NATO, for the first time in the Albanian history, a US president is visiting Albania. That president is George W. Bush. The city, Tirana especially, was totally closed. We didn't have the tour that day. <laughs> the U.S. president is in Tirana. You couldn't go on your window because the U.S. president is in here. After meeting everybody here in Tirana, it was a half a day trip, so on his way to the airport, he stops in a small city called Fushkruja. Before you go to Kruja, the city where our national hero was born, you have a small city called Fushkruja. On his way to the airport, he stops in Fushkruja. If you visit the city of Fushkruja right now, they only have one statue over there. George W. Bush statue. <laughs> After meeting the leaders over there, he's trying to have a coffee in a small coffee shop. Here you have the Fushkruja people trying to touch him, to grab him, like he's some kind of saint. So the US president broke all the security rules right in the middle of the people of Fushkruja, meeting everybody. After that visit, Bush declared it was a dream for him to be expected in one country, as he was expected in Fushkruja. He finally managed to go to the coffee shop. He had his coffee, left the coffee shop. The table was surrounded by red rope. Even right now, nobody is allowed to sit on that table, on that chair, that George W. Bush table, George W. Bush chair. Of course, even the name of the bar was changed on George W. Bush. Why all this support for US? When we are speaking about the economical partners, the countries that are really investing money here in Albania, we have Germany, we have Italy, we have Greece, we have Turkey, even Canada is investing in here, but not US. 
The idea is this, after communism collapsed, we only saw the US as the example of democracy. And normally, the second and the most important reason is that US helped Kosovo. During the Kosovo war, US helped Kosovo. So we consider the Kosovo people our brothers, they helped our brothers. For us, it's very important to have a good relationship with the country who helped our brothers. And normally it's Bush popular in here because it was Bush who visited the country. If you visit Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, you will see a very big statue of Bill Clinton. So Bill Clinton is very popular over there. Okay, let's hope Trump is not visiting Tirana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to change the name on that building over there. Trump Tower. It's better Top Tani. <laughs> I have one question. Yes. 90% uh, of the population in Kosovo are Albanians, is it true? Yes. <laughs> no, the idea is that I already explained it when we started the tour, yeah. that everybody who is living right now in Kosovo, Kosovo, 90% of them, they consider themselves as Albanians because they were part of Albania before the, uh, the Balkan Wars in 1930. In 1930, we lost Kosovo. But still, the people over there, they speak our language, they have our tradition, and they still consider themselves as Albanians. If we had to vote right now, here in Albania, in Kosovo, we would vote so that we can get united. But the idea is that we know that's impossible, really impossible. Kosovo was a part of Serbia. The other European countries are supporting Kosovo. In being an independent country, they are not supporting Kosovo to be united with another country. So our project to be united with Kosovo is the European Union. So we are going to be part of the European Union. Kosovo is going to be part of the European Union. Some way we are going to be united as European countries, part of the European Union. That's like the project that we have. Okay, next up is the Albanian Parliament. We are going to speak about politics over there. This way. Okay, that building over there, that's the official building of the Parliament of Albania. The right says, Kuvendi ish Republika sa Shqipëris. So you know the country as Albania and the people as Albanians, but in all the official buildings you will never see the right that says Albania. The idea is this, in our local language we have a different name for the country. It's directly connected with the eagle. Okay. It's directly connected with the eagle. The eagle, the word for eagle in our country, it's Shqiponia. So the country is called Shqiperia, the country of the eagle. The people are called Shqipatar. Our international name always remained Albania because the first ancient writers who were visiting this region, they first met an Illyrian tribe called the Albanians. So in all the international documents, they always refer to the region as the land of the Albanians. So that's why we have Albania's international name. The local name in different periods of our history was totally changed. But nobody knows about that. That's the good thing of having an international name. You can change your name every time you want, nobody will notice that. <laughs> but right now the country is called Shqipëri, other people are called Shqipatar. That's why you would never see a right that says Albania. It's only a private university that's called Univers Albanian University. But nothing to do. Is the name is Albania. Okay. That building over there is the official building of the parliament. As you can see, a very small building, such a small building that this is the official one. We have another building that's used for parliament offices. Okay, since 1992, new democracy. Since that during communism, we always vote for one. Only five parties have a member in parliament. Only five of them are considered like main parties. Okay, two of them are the important parties who are really ruling the country, the Socialist Party and the Democratic Party. Since 1992, we vote for 140 deputies. Once we elect the parliament, the parliament is elected the government and also the prime minister. So the person with the real political power here in Albania is the prime minister. We also have a president, but the president is more to keep balance between the prime minister and the parliament. It's not that he has real political power. The socialist party is ruling the country and our prime minister is Edi Rama, socialist. Okay, as I told you, 90% of the Albanians support the two main parties, the Democratic Party and the Socialist Party, on their project to be part of the European Union. Now that everybody is leaving the European Union, 
We really want to be part of the European Union. We can take Britain's place. <laughs> That's not how it works. They did this. A lot of Albanians are living outside our official borders. A lot of them are living in the European countries. So we really want to be part of Europe because if we get accepted into the European Union, we will have the same economical standards that the other European countries have. So we will offer the same opportunities that the other countries are offering to the Albanian people. So a lot of them will be free to come back here in Albania. They will have the same opportunities in here. Why not live in your own country? That's why for us it's very important to be part of the European Union. And that's why we are having a lot of support from the European Union because they don't want another Greece to be part of the European Union. So if we are going to be accepted, we are going to be accepted because we really achieve the economical standards that we need. Since 2010 we are officially a candidate to be part of the European Union. We are part of Schengen, so we are allowed to move inside the European countries without a visa, only with a passport. For the next eight years, if the European Union is still there, we will be part of the European Union, I'm pretty sure. In the last five years, really, we changed a lot of things. Like in the, for the first time in the last five years, we are having politicians being accused of corruption, ministers of the Albanian government ending up in prison or being accused for corruption. Five years ago in here, you could corrupt every policeman with only five euros. Right now, you cannot do that. Everybody, every policeman has a camera, and if you are filmed, trying to corrupt a policeman, you end up in prison. Not the policeman who's taking the money. <laughs> but still, we are trying, really trying to fight corruption, especially in low levels. We have a lot of corruption in our medical system, in the education system, in the policeman, with the policemen, in the army, everywhere. So we started at least to fight corruption in low levels, and we are having also special laws and special judges. We'll investigate every politician who ruled our country in the last 25 years who's accused for corruption and everything. This, this parliament elections will take place in a few weeks. Um, yeah, in 25 of June. from the Democrats, isn't there? No, we oh, already solved that. Like, it's solved? Yeah, ah, okay. we managed to solve that. Okay. What was the problem? The problem was this. The Democratic Party, that right now is the opposition party, they were accusing the Prime Minister to try to control the elections, trying to buy votes. So, with the help of the European Union, the opposition party and the government managed to find an agreement. The idea is this, right now we are ruled by a technical government. Half of the government belongs to the opposition, half of the government belongs to the socialists. So half is socialist, half is democrat. The prime minister is still a Durama, but still, nice of, uh, half of the ministries are ruled by the democrats. So they cannot accuse each other for trying to control the elections, trying to buy votes. But it's pretty much the same story every four years. Even four years ago, five years ago, when the Socialist Party was the opposition party, it was the same thing. We had Eddie Rama with a big tent in the main square protesting against the democracies, protesting against them, trying, accusing them for trying to buy votes. Pretty much the same story, but this time really they found a very good agreement. They both of the main parties are controlling the government so they cannot accuse each other for trying to buy votes. We have the same opportunities, we are controlling half of the ministries of the Albania. Okay, the big building that we've seen here, it's a new mosque. It's called the Namazja Mosque. After communism collapsed, the Christian had a new church. The Orthodox had a new cathedral. We have even Bektashi sect in here who had a new teke. The only mosque that the Muslim religion was using is at Hembeu Mosque, the mosque in the city center. So every time they are calling for a big prayer, they're obligated to close Skanderbeg Square, the prayers made on Skanderbeg Square. So they needed a new mosque, they really wanted a new mosque. So they owned the land in this area. So they managed to find the money. So this mosque is financed by the Albanian Muslim community and the Turkish government. So they managed to find the money. They decided to build the mosque in this area in here. Later, it's called the Namazia Mosque. When we visit another building, we will explain why we have a mosque next to the mosque, to the parliament. But it's more connected with another building. So you have to wait a few more minutes. Okay, any questions about the mosque or something in politics? Okay, next up is the bridge, an ancient bridge, the Tainer's Bridge, it's this way.
case, the bridge in here, it's called the Taylor Bridge. You remember the white street, Muratoktani street, only for walkers? When the bridge starts, that's Muratoktani, the end of Muratoktani street. In ancient Tirana, after crossing this bridge, you just left the city of Tirana. That was how small the city was. As you can see, Ottoman style, over 200 years old. We have a bridge, but no river. The river is deviated over there. So River Lana, that right now is crossing over there, used to cross in this area in here. During communism, for no reason, they just decided to deviate the river. I think so they could have the opportunity to build in this area. Somebody they were trying to divide the city center from the other area of Tirana. So this area in here is totally considered the center of Tirana. Right now the bridge is used as a shortcut and a small tourist attraction. What was the name again? Tainers, the Tainers Bridge or the Tabaku Bridge in the Albanian language. Okay, something very important that you can notice in here is the building next to the bridge. It's a communist building with green colors, with dark colors, with depressive colors. In the other part of the street, after this part of the street, you will notice another communist building. When he was mayor, he's a painter by profession. I think now the only European countries have been ruled by a painter. The idea was, every day you go to work, it's better to have colors than green colors, depressive colors. Okay, as you can see the buildings over there, there was our old communist symbols, communist buildings, but with colors. The owners of the office are just not going to redecorate them again. So let's...